Hello and welcome to Bharat Shakti Dotted. I am Brigadier Chatterjee, editor of Bharat Shakti Dotted. We'll be talking about a book that's been written by an army officer, a serving army officer, and it's about China. The book is a storehouse of knowledge that's been put in between the covers of this particular publication. Uh, the book is name is People's Liberation Army's Tactical Transformation with Chinese Characteristics. Right. Well, um, to carry out a review of the book, I have with me the author of the book, Brigadier Naran. Oh. Thank you. Brigadier Naran is an is a serving army officer. He's from the regiment of artillery, currently he commands an artillery brigade. And she's already written two books on various subjects, and this is his third book. Welcome to Bharat Shakti Dot in Brigadier Naran. Thank you, sir. Uh Brigadier Brigadier Naran, if you're comfortable, I'll uh, take off with the couple of issues that I have about your book and he could possibly let us know in more detail about these issues which I think everybody should come to know about it. Uh, firstly, uh, just give, give, give us all a little bit of an idea about yourself and uh, your academic background, the books that you have written, all that. Uh, I, since childhood, want you to become an Air Force officer uh, got a chance, had some problem with eyes, or to become an army officer. But it's been a dream since childhood. Uh, fortunately, I belong to a Ketmiya family. My mother, my mentor, Dr. Mrs. Manchunara, is writing her 12th book now. So after having been uh, served in uh, National Defense Academy, studied in Rashtriya Indian Military College, I got commissioned proudly into Regiment of Artillery in 1997. I've done all the career courses which an army officer is expected to, including... Uh, graduating from the prestigious National Institute of Defense Studies, Tokyo, Japan. And uh, I picked up this flair for writing following my mother in 2017 when I came up with the first book, which traced the trajectory of Red Army, the PNA's unmanned warfare. And uh, then in 2018, I worked on Chinese strategic deterrence. Currently, I'm working on two more books, which is on Tibet's dual purpose infrastructure development, as well as the Chinese strategic support force. Wow, you, uh, you have uh, produced a pretty voluminous book and I'm talking about your uh, current book uh, about the PLA. It appears that you've already done a lot of voluminous work for your other books, although they haven't gone through them, I can imagine. If this be this thick, how will they be? But uh, then tell me, what's your motivation to be actually looking at China so deeply and uh, will be finding the time be a serving officer to be writing a book this thick is the one that uh, I just felt. Honestly, sir, uh, studying China is a passion and it grows deeper day by day. When my second book was being released during the Military Literature Festival in Chandigarh in 2019, a famous Chandigarh journalist, Mr. Mandeep Bajwa, asked me that we have spoken about strategic deterrence, but what about the Chinese section which we faced in 1962? It stuck me that I me to go down and study right up till a section, come and find out, dig out those relevant details which are not known. So the idea was to procure, make a Indian guide to Chinese tactical formations, how they are functioning, how our section functions, how our company functions, how that integrates into a combined house, battalion, a brigade. And how do the Chinese technological advancement in drones and others confirm that? So it required a lot of open source intelligence research, OSINT as they call it. And I did look into the Western, the Ru Americans, the Russian, Japanese, Korean studies to weed out the shaft from the Chinese propaganda and have a balanced mix of what and where they are. I'm so glad you've taken all the tactical side of uh, uh, the Chinese employment and all Chinese a construct of the various units and formation because we all talk grand strategy and we all talk strategy. We forget that it's at the tactical level that the battle will really be fought or won or lost. It doesn't matter what's your strategy. So I'm that way very glad that you focused on the tactical level. Give us an overview of the book in the sense what are the major issues that you are trying to bring about there. So this book, as you highlighted, is all about the tactical level transformation. Getting out what the Chinese original thought process behind it was. I didn't want to go by the Western bias, what a Chinese original thinking about that particular topic is. 
uh, it thus talked about Chinese modernizations, the aims being repeatedly bring, brought out by the Chinese uh, General Secretary Xi Jinping about the three modernizations, mechanization, or they moved on to informatization, intergenerization. Then the history behind the construction of combined arms brigades, going down to combined arms battalions, and midway through also keeping the structure of combined arms division. They were studying the Armenian war so closely, and hence they wanted to develop drones and all they won about not only mass producing drones, but integrating it. And uh, finally, the man behind the machine matters the most. So while I talked about below the neck reforms, which have not been studied, I also touched on one important topic, which is the military policy reforms. So overall, if you have to ask me, this book is a comprehensive guide for any middle level, junior level officer, you know, the senior officers of any country who wants to study China, or any China scholar who wants to know what PLA Army has gone about. He's not. You have little about Chinese modernization like you uh, talked just now. Uh, there are three issues I thought which uh, you were more focused upon, and these three issues are mechanization, information, concerning the intelligence. Now, what are the kind of strides that the Chinese have taken in this particular area, mechanization, information, information and intelligence validation? Uh, so you see, right from the 16th National Party Congress till the recent 20th, they have always been talking about the various modernization. While the earlier Chinese uh, general secretaries of the party and the CMC chairmen talked about mechanization, there was a midway shift of moving here in organization with the Gulf Wars. And finally, now Xi Jinping's focus has shifted to intelligentization. Now, what is it all about? Mechanization is basically getting the quality firepower, mobility, protection. While informatization is increasing the precision, fighting the systems confrontation battle. And intelligentization is putting the three pillars, the data, the computing power, and the algorithms together. So they fight the unmanned machines in a much better manner. And lastly, of course, as they're moving towards quantumization, they are trying to get take a clear lead over the others in the field of quantum. So if you have to ask me to sum up mechanization, it is basically about hitting furthest, fastest, at the hardest possible pace with precision. It is basically manifesting combat power as close as possible to the objective so that the combat power as such is enhanced. Informatization is about integrating them together making information the key energy, networks as the key central source. And finally, intelligentization is making the cognitive domain centric where data, algorithms, computing power replace the manpower, not completely, but get integrated together with the manned and unmanned teams, reduce the UDA loops, and they're able to fight a much better battle. The whole aim being to become the world's most advanced army by 2049, the aim to surpass the United States. The idea about the combined arms brigade, in fact, combined arms brigade, if I'm not wrong, is, a, is very central to your uh, book. You do it a lot on the combined arms brigade, and that's the kind of a formation that we are also testing out in our context, the Indian context I'm talking about. So, uh, you, can, you could possibly dwell a little more on the conceptual aspect of this particular thing is also the what is the organizational aspect of politics. Uh, so, combined arms is a frequent, uh, peculiar word in Chinese terminology, they call it itching, which is, I mean, if you translate it literally, take a Google translation, it means synthetic. So, I'll use the quote of a Xinjiang military district commander, uh, a regiment commander, and he says, synthetic construction is not a simple combination of personal weapons and equipment, but an organic integration of personal and combat arms and resources. So basically, these below-the-neck reforms have tried to integrate those various compartments of a multi-domain wall, the building blocks together, and integrate them so closely that cohesively they can fight a battle. 
they picked up their lessons from the Russian BTGs, from the American PCTs, to try and build up a combined arms brigade, which is much more cohesive and which tries and fights the battle, battle in a much more integrated manner. The aim is to move from just quantity to quality and quantity together. Uh, they have gone about solving these complex problems together to make these formations much more portable, flexible, mobile and deployable. Miniaturization is the key aspect. If I had to term four aims of these combined arms brigades and battalions, it was to increase the mobility, increase the composition of armored infantry, mechanized infantry as we call it, increase the development and of these uh, forces by enhancing more and more light armored units, ensure mobility in high altitude areas, ensure mobility on the beach for the amphibious forces. And then a very important lesson from the Ukrainian war to improve the artillery's degree of self-sufficiency. You see the quantum of PCL-191 which has got integrated. And of course, pursue these ground forces integration with the air force, with the rocket force, with the strategic support force. How these forces can optimally facilitate the man on the ground to conquer land. That's what about it. Thank you. Uh, a little more about the combined arms brigade. As I understand from your book, uh, standard brigade would normally consist of about nine or battalions. It will have a fire unit and artillery fire unit. It will also have a rocket battery. Now, you are yourself a gunner officer. Do you think uh, also as big as uh, nine battalion strong combined arms brigade, uh, for them this kind of uh, integrated artillery being limited just to one unit and one battery of a uh, uh, rocket, will that be adequate? Also, oh, you are absolutely right. You know, whether the Russians have gone with their battalion tactical groups or the Americans with the brigade combat teams, the Chinese have studied them closely and incorporated how better they can enhance the firepower. So, if you see at an infantry company level, the motors being the 60mm remain the same. However, at the battalion level, whether uh, the, it's a 82mm motor or a 122mm motor, they've enhanced the numbers. From 6, they've enhanced it to 9. They've ensured that the mobility is matching. Now, your question more contains to at the brigade level. Now, at the brigade level, they have integrated an artillery battalion, which is 122mm caliber. Wherein the Americans had a difference of 105mm, 125mm. They have standardized 122mm as a caliber. So you improve the logistics at the artillery level. And more so importantly, as we have seen the HIMARS being employed in the Ukrainian war, they have integrated the 122mm MLRS with maxing mobility. So that creates a large quantum of firepower which is available. And most importantly, they have gone for more precision. Now, where the major difference comes in this battle is the integration of a group army or the Combined Core Artillery Brigade. In 2015, it had a mixture of 122mm, 130mm, 152mm and few 155mm. 2017, he introduced PHL-03, something like the uh, Smirch weapon system. And finally, 2020 onwards, it introduced the PCL 191s. So, if you remember Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, he fired the PCL 191s. And that adds phenomenal firepower at a very high range. Claim range of some of the calibers of its support system, wherein you can use many different types of calibers. And one of the calibers goes right up to 450 to 500 kilometers, starting from 150. So, that's putting a lot of punch at the place where it matters. Okay, uh, what about the mountain formations? Anything that you would like to, or you have covered, you would like to put across? Sir, the mountain formations are basically the light combined arms brigades, which are based on mobile vehicles. Now, the key mountain formations which he has focused is within the Western Theatre Command. That is, the Tibet military region having the 52nd and 53rd 
mountain combined arms brigades which have been made i mobility that is all the troops can the section also moves on a vehicle independent to it as close to the objective as possible so the road infrastructure development is facilitating the faster movement of the mountain brigades then uh, within the 76 uh, 77 group army it has the 40th mountain combined arms brigade similarly 75th group army has a mountains combined arms brigade the whole focus is to induct equipment which is capable of fighting in a high altitude warfare it is able to take the strain what that terrain forces function in a uncongenial environment take on that difficult uh, terrain conditions and fight the battle we try let's get on to drones uh, the chinese are there into drones in a big way and you also devoted a lot of your studies it appears to uh, chinese capabilities in terms of drones and unmanned vehicles uh, for various kinds of operations so, uh, could you give us an update on the capabilities that the chinese have developed if you see sir today china is the leading producer of drones now as part of xi's pet project of civil military fusion how does that mass production of drones translate onto ground so from that human waves in 1962 war he now wants to develop a wave of drones and robots performing five d's as i call it that is the disruptive dull difficult dangerous tasks so these drones have been integrated right up in the battalion level company level brigade level group army level and the theater command level so while a drone at the battalion level will do some dull difficult tasks some ugvs they will be very short quadcopters there when you go up to a brigade level the artillery battalion the reconnaissance battalion has its own drones which can go up in medium range when you go a step further higher at the group army level at that place he has integrated drones which are at longer range so if a pcl191 or a phl03 has to fire the drones are integral to it the sensor to shooter link has been absolutely shortened you go a step higher you have at the theater command the army has its own isr brigade it has its own army aviation brigades at the group army level and the pna air force provides the uav brigade with the i class stealth drone the wz8 series the wz7 the ch4 so it's a variety of drones and more importantly he is now moving on to the concept of swarms which are are machines both set of drones together club to perform a variety of tasks whether it is ad anti ad whether it is uh, ew so whole set of tasks including destruction being performed together as a team a uh, man and unmanned team one last question uh, brigadier now uh, this is about the ukraine war where you want everybody to learn lessons from the ukraine war uh, what do you think the chinese have taken home as far as the ukraine war is concerned this special operation which has now got it into an elongated war the chinese are picking up the lessons how to fight in urbanized terrain how should that company be become combined arms integrated so from where it was a combined arms battalion how can he get that rocket down to a company where it requires how can he ensure that the weapons integration is much better how the targeting is better you know there's a strategic bureaucracy break in the targeting cycles with the russian how does he break that and make the sensor shooter linkage much shorter how is that soldier on ground logistically more enabled how is he more enabled by the technology which is there how does space particularly electronic warfare gets integrated with them how do the missiles become more precise and on the counter side how does his formations are able to deny enemy the usage of drones so you see an example a pls combined arm battalion has got a jamming platoon integrated at a combined arms brigade thus it can do anti drone tasks it can deny pgms being fired that's the capability he's trying to build up at each level i i think we ended on this note uh, thank you so much and thanks again i think this is uh, one book all uh, military professionals will find 
very useful uh, for their studies, not just military professionals, anybody with a, a deeper interest in strategic issues as far as the Chinese are concerned, will find it very interesting. All the best for this book, of course, uh, will hit in the stands and also for your new, any new ventures that you have. Thank you, Brida, for having joined us. Thank you, sir. Jain, sir. Uh, thank you, Vish. Thanks for having tuned into Bhalshakti.in. Do tune in, like this now, and then you, you will find interesting stories. Do go to our social media channels also, like us. Let us know in case we have, you have any subject that you want us to talk about. Thank you.